Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome back to some more old school magic here. Just wanted to show you, start with these uh, I got for Father's Day from my wife and kids. Pretty damn nice. Uh, with the, the muck and, uh, and these t-shirts here. And the first deck we have here is the combined might of the priesthood of Yakmoth in the demon engine. And we see the priesthood in the center of the deck here and those three Yakmoth priests. They can tap to sacrifice an artifact and gain as much mana in black mana as that artifact has costs. And some of those artifacts are the robots in the top row there toiling endlessly under the darkened sky from the factories and workshops of the plain of Yakmoth. And uh, they can be sacrificed after they have split up like a Tetravus or shot their guns like a Triskillian, then be sacked for black mana. They can be used to pump the uh, ants of Yakmoth, uh, those carrion ants, or to play drain lives that can be pumped for huge amounts of black mana uh, from those sacrificed artifacts. Now the work of the robots never ends as they can be brought back again and again with animate dead and then be sacrificed again and brought back again. And those Skull of Orm can be used by the uh, priesthood of Yakmoth to bring back the animate dead They can be cast again. Thus we can have a cycle going where uh, the robots will just get reused. The priesthood of Yakmoth also has uh, icy manipulators they can sack and they can be used to just provide more control over the board and they have employed a royal assassin expensive as he is he works well with those uh, icy manipulators he can tap to destroy a tapped creature and the icy manipulator can tap a creature so that's just a nifty combination right there now the priests of Yakmoth are uh, actually working on summoning the Yakmoth demon that might grace us with his presence if we're lucky. Um, there's a single one in the deck. Uh, he is a huge demon being 6-6 six, six, and he flies and he's a fast attacker as he has first strike. And uh, if I don't sacrifice an artifact to his uh, graces each round, he'll refuse to work. He'll tap and do two damage to me. So um, yeah, we have to like, when we play him, we have to have a lot of artifacts and a lot of those <laughs> pitiful uh, robots out there that you can, you can just munch on uh, for him to stay satisfied. Now, I have an entire deck tech on this uh, particular deck on the channel. I'll link down to that below if you're curious. We don't have time to go more in depth here as there's a battle to be had. It's coming up against the Aboria out of time. Now, the Aboria out of time is a green and blue deck. Uh, it makes use of those arborea that we see in the center there. Just a huge flesh-eating plant at, in the middle of the board. Uh, when you play that, uh, the, rules, the rules are that you can't attack uh, any player that doesn't play a permanent. Um, so I guess those flesh-eating plants will just eat anyone trying to attack, like a huge moat that also picks on flyers. So there'll be like a truce if you play that. But across from that Arborea, we have a wizard school with a lot of Tims. They can just ping the other player for one damage. They're not, they're not attacking, they're just pinging him. And you can play, we can play instill energy on him and he can ping several times. Then the Arborea out of time, it has all sorts of weird creatures uh, living there, like the time elemental that we see under the Tim. And they can be used just to bounce permanence up on the hand of uh, the opponent. And that works well with all those black wises and angst of Misra. And yes, the brewer of this deck, Isians Ole, he's so fond of black wises and angst of Misra. He's a pilot of the Berserker Talk on the channel, and also some variants of the UR Counterburn that makes use of black wises and uh, angst of Misra as well. So he's found a place for them here. And um, yeah, I guess the theme is that you don't do damage by creature attacking with this deck, you just play the Aborea, just uh, making sure that no one can attack. And then with the uh, black wise in play, the other, guy, the other guy has to play permanence or he'll take damage and then you can attack him actually. Or if he doesn't play permanence, he'll take damage. And that those time elementals will bounce permanence back up on, on his hand so he'll take even more damage from those black wises. The Angst of Mithra will make sure that he'll take damage if he uh, plays a land. 
And even if he plays a land, we can bounce them back with those time elementals and boomerangs, so he has to pay even more life once again if he tries to play them. There's even a couple of storm seekers right there under the Arborea that can really just blast the other player when his hand is full. So yeah, just really annoying, I imagine. But um, it is an exotic brew and those time elementals and the wizarding school will provide a novel challenge for the priesthood of Yakmoth to overcome, I imagine. Uh, so who knows how this will go down. They might get the drop on them. Let's get ready for the fight. A demonic deity against time walking dragonflies, I suppose. So we have me on the left, on the plane of Yakmoth, that black playmat there. Here's my hand. Brain Geyser, Mox, Manavolt, uh, Mox Ruby, a priest of Yakmoth, and a tr his Triskillian slave in an underground sea. Here we have the hand of Aborea out of time. Prodigal Sorcerer, a bunch of lands and a Blackwise, and one of those time elementals. So yeah, Blackwise on the play here. That's a good start for him. Doing three points of damage immediately. Luckily for me, I have a lot of fast mana in this hand, so here we go. Boing. And uh, yeah, probably a priest. Yep. Okay, so a mana vault and a priest coming down. I'm without out of black wise range at least, but still it it's worth it. I mean, did three points of damage and if I use forget a double blue mana I can bring guys up for a bunch, but it'll put me in black wise range again. Strip mine drawing into here. Okay, that's six mana, so probably a Triskillian at this point. Yeah, here we go. So, we can actually shoot with that, and then the priest can just sack him to the guards and uh, get six black mana, cast something else. So if we ever get... Oh, I attack him with the Yakmoth priest here. First single point of damage. He's a 1-2 creature. Uh, so if we ever get a double blue mana, we can actually shoot the Triskillian, then sack it, and then just get a huge brain guy, so if we want to. Uh, I'm not sure it's worth it because we also have the mana vault. Ooh, okay, time elemental coming out here. Now the time elemental can actually bounce itself up if we try to kill it um, as a fast effect. It costs two blue, blue mana and two colorless mana for it to activate and it can bounce any permanent back on the controller's hand, or owner's hand it is. So, okay, we're attacking with both the priest and the Triskillian here and then shooting the time elemental immediately before, before it Next turn, uh, it'll not have summoning sickness and will be impossible to shoot it. If we try to shoot it, it'll just bounce and the shots will fizzle. So attacking first, just to make sure that the Triskillian is a 4-4, because it's now a 2-2, having shot two of its guns at this point. But I, I think it was worth it. It has a boomerang in hand. Still lacking that double blue mana for the Brain Geyser though. Animate dead on the time elemental. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so we need another blue mana again, and then we can use that. If we can actually bounce the... Oh yeah, I, I see this play. We're doing this because we can shoot with the Triskillian, then bounce it back into our hand and play it again. And shoot again. Okay, there's a... Okay, now there's a Skull of Warm. Now we can actually... That was probably better not to do that. Okay, but he bounces the time ele elemental up on his hand, and the, and the animate dead goes to the graveyard here. Strip mining his tropical island. We don't want him having double blue mana here because then he can use the time element so then he can boomerang and counter. Now he doesn't play with the counter magic, but I didn't know that at this point. Okay, there's a bird and a little dragonfly there. Taking a point of damage. Uh, I'm taking a point of damage from the tap mana vault. Not untapping it. Okay, there's a double blue. Now attacking again for three. Shooting the mana bird. Next turn, I'll likely sack the Triskillian uh, just to get um, a huge brain geyser, perhaps. Ooh, okay, a prodigal sorcerer coming down. We're mana draining it. It is the only counter spell in the in this deck, but provide us with even more colorless mana at this point. That's great. Now, do I untap? that mana vault. I likely won't because I want the double blue. Yeah, taking more damage from it. Drawing a card. So we have three colorless mana in the pool from the mana drain. Now, what to spend them on?
Okay, the priest of Yarkmouth is now sacrificing that Triskillian. We've got six black mana out of that. Okay, using the three colorless mana from the mana drain and the two marksmen for five colorless mana, bringing the Skull of Orm brings the enemy dead right back. Okay, playing that to cast the Triskillian right back in. Ooh, and a Yarkmouth demon coming down here from the six black mana from the sacked Triskillian. What a play here. So great. Now I'm shooting the time elemental while he's tapped out. Oh, he plays a Chaos Orb though. Ah, oh, man. Too bad. But it misses. <laughs> that is a charmed life. But he is a god, so I suppose it makes sense. He has Chaos Orb repellent on him. I've never seen a Chaos Orb go so disastrously wrong. <laughs> Just bouncing over the entire board here. But uh, it happens from time to time that it misses. But this was really, really a miss. Okay, now... Count, uh, Drawing two cards with the brain guy, so we got a royal assassin and I think it was another member of the Yarkmouth priesthood right there. And here comes the huge Yarkmouth demon, 6-6, six, six, and a Triskillian, and a priest. And that is game. <laughs> Nine points of damage there. So the Yarkmouth priest, uh, demon, we got to see him in the first match. Uh, excellent stuff here. Uh, so I'm glad I made that work. Uh, match two. Immediately here, black wise again, turn one. So... I don't know if we have the same start here, speedy start. It looks like it. Black Lotus here. No, can't play with it. Can't play anything with it. So taking three points of damage will likely take him when an end of Mistra turn two. That is a brutal start from him. <laughs> now, getting down a workshop immediately here. It's worth the two points of damage, I suppose. Sacking the Lotus and playing it to Travis here. Okay, it's a 4-4 four, four flying robot that can split out to... A bunch of interceptors, I suppose. So it becomes four one-one flyers. So I'm splitting them out here. I think they will have summoning sickness, though. So the that's the one downside of the to, to Travis. But imagine if we can sacrifice that, the counters will stay in play. So if we can recycle that to Travis, it would be great. We just pump those to Travis interceptors out. Now getting a cry shield here. It is another very rarely seen card. Uh, we could tap two mana and tap that, and it will provide plus zero plus X in toughness for a creature where X equals the casting cost. So we can actually make that to Travis a one seven flying wall at this point. Now that would be, be great if we were facing uh, a mid range deck, but we're not. He doesn't have any attacking creatures. He f placed these instead, prodigal sorceress and some Lanawa Elves. Now, we're... Okay, we are merging all the to Travis counters back into the to Travis here. I'm just checking that it can actually be done like that. But it can. Uh, so it becomes a 4-4 flyer again. That way, the Protocol Sorcerer can't ping them all the, away. Drawing into a Mox Jet, that's pretty nice because we can play that without uh, getting any damage from that Ang of Mistress. It's not a land. We need to get to continuously play cards here or else the black wise will have us now attacking with the 4-4 four, four flyer putting him down to 12 life here i suppose no 13 no 12 okay that makes sense so uh, yeah he needs to he needs to work fast here he needs to find a solution for that uh, to traverse right there Looks like it could be a boomerang he's considering here. Something. He has five mana. Really considering something here. Okay, play. Mm. Okay, that's an Aboria. Here it goes. Now, he has played a permanent because the Aboria counts as a permanent, but next turn, that Aboria will spread out on the middle of the board and the, of the map, and the two Travis can't get over it. It'll just block the path if he doesn't play any permanents. Okay, drain lifing the Prodigal Sorcerer, though, because that was his play. Getting the Aboria up and then start pinging me. Now he attacks. Okay, the bird gets in the way. Squawk. There's a land though. 
Let me see. Let deactivate the Arboria. Okay, but he time walks. So that makes sense now. Now he can take the next turn and ooh, and another Ankh of Mistra. Now I can't play any lanes and even more screwed by that Black Wise. Next turn. Now he shouldn't play anything and the Arboria will protect him. Yep, passes the, the turn. So the Arboria is activated now. No one can attack Jens Ole. I tried to anyway because I forget about the time walk, but it was the second turn, so never mind. All right, I'll do it your way, <laughs> animating that Prodigal Sorcerer. Next turn I can start pinging him. And now, with the... oh, I forgot to split it to Travis out. I would have done that, but I forgot. So just passing the turn. Okay, so now we can start ping pinging him. We can't attack him, but we can ping him with his own Prodigal Sorcerer here. Now we're splitting up. We might as well because he might have, I don't know, a crumble or something. And I will lose all the eggs in the same basket here. So now they're split out. Now pinging him for one. The Prodigal Sorcerer. And just playing a Triskillion here. So that can ping him for three with those guns. It can't attack though. But I need to continually play cards or the Black Wise will put the herd on me. I'm, I'm down to 10 life. But I'm not afraid of playing cards because uh, if I can, because uh, he can't, uh, he can't attack me with, with anything. Pinging him again with the, with that little sorcerer there. So yeah, the clock is on him. He actually needs to do something because we've made the prodigal sorcerer work against him. An undead prodigal sorcerer in the service of the Yachmoth priests. After long deliberations here, playing a underground sea, doing four points of damage to me, down to six life here. I wonder why that was so important. I think I'm in, within Black Wise range now, so might as well. But Sonic Blast will be brutal. Sushi coming out, but can't attack. That Aborea keeps us in check. But next turn, the Prodigal Saucer could ping for one, and then the Triskillion will let loose of all guns. That's four points of damage. So actually, two turns from now. Ping, down to four. Next turn, it's just killing us, just lock and loading its guns here. Okay, it gives up, here we go, bang, bang. The engine wins. Had a time twister in hand and a bunch of lands I couldn't play. Now the time twister just put me within black wise range and I had five cards in hand, so I was beginning to get choked out by that black wise. So it was actually, without that prodigal sorcerer, <laughs> I think I would have lost. What a traitor. <laughs> so bonus game here, Blackwise turn one. We've seen that before, haven't we? From him. Three points of damage on the demon engine immediately. And the Library of Alexandria turn one. It's not worth that much unless we can get rid of the Blackwise, but we can't. At least have some fast mana. I don't have any artifact removal in the demon engine. A gate to Phyrexia could be kind of cool. Oh, now the Ankh of Mishra turn two here. And I get why Yensula, he loves those cards figuring out any way to brew with them, I I guess. So taking two points of damage for playing a swamp here and damage from the black wise. I see manipulator coming down. Tapping his tropical island in his upkeep. So at least we are actually forcing him to play more lands as well at this point. Ah taking more damage from the black wise being down to twelve points of life from those artifacts. Strip mine down to 10, stripping his... Oh, that's pretty nasty. Another icy man. Icy game here. S tapping his island. Now he has to... No, no, no. He forgot to take damage from his Ankh of Mistra here. That was the point. That he should take damage because I'm tapping his lanes. That's annoying. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, well. Tetravus coming out. He should be at 18 here. Now, he should take two points of damage again. Why are we forgetting this? At least it's not a tournament. It's just a friendly kitchen table game here. Uh, okay, now he remembers one of them. Okay. 
Okay, cracking there to Travis. Let's see if he hits this time. It hits. No Chaos Hop Repellent on a simple to, to Travis. It's only the Yakmoth Demon that's blessed like that. So, yeah, I suppose he did that before, before I could split the counters out. Oh, but we're animating it. So it's a 3 4, but we can still split it out. Now Ancestral Recall. Yeah, that's pretty dangerous with that Blackwise but, and Anger of Mithra, but uh, just taking the chance here. A lot of artifact man now tapping two of his lands with the ice manipulators yeah so man you need to put down some more lands and that anger of misra will hurt you if you do so oh boomerang oh as a fast effect when i tap them he boomerangs the enemy dead up on my hand i think it would have been better for him to boomerang that to travis now and then i had to pay six mana to get it out perhaps i don't know Oh yeah, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. I'm, he reminds me I have to take a point of damage because he boomeranged to my hand. So I'm now I now have five cards in hand. Now I have six cards in hand. So we need to cast something here. The enemy dead would be a sure thing, right? No, looks like it could be a Triskillion instead. Yep, here we go. That's the only thing that's better than a hit Travis, <laughs> I think. Going down to seven life, and now animate. Okay. Living life dangerously here. Sacrificing two uh, life for getting down that factory, but still, it's a lot of attackers next turn. Another Ankh of Mishra, I don't care at this point. We got the army out. And we've gone through the hailstorm here of getting down our lanes. Down to seven life, now attacking for eight. I could have attacked with a factory as well. For some reason I don't. I should have. So in his upkeep, no, no, never mind. I'm tutoring here. It's down to 10 life. I don't think I play with Mind Twist in the Demon Engine deck. No, I don't. So what to pick? The Ancestor Recall has been... Oh, a Time War probably, right? No, a Chaos Orb. Chaos Orbing a Tropical Island. Just taking the other one. Bank. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay, that's another way to finish it. Now he's locked down by those Ices. A time war could have been used as well, though. It would have killed him if I had remembered to attack with the factory, but never mind. Got him here. Got through, got everything down. Now a Royal Assassin with the Ices. No, I want something else. Ooh, the Ockham's Demon. <laughs> Just to say hello and goodbye. And here comes the Robotic Slaves finishing the game. So yeah, Demon Engine took this one, three to zero. Uh, pretty fun uh, and unorthodox deck to play against here. It is a spicy brew and Zola has made. And um, one of the themes was that they had to pay points for several cards. It's like a spicy point system. So that's why he didn't play with the Ancestor Recall and uh, uh, Time Twister. But even without that, he had me at the ropes uh, several times. I think actually in game two, only that Prodigal Sorcerer uh, saved my bacon or the black wise would have done me in before i could have finished it now we're still waiting for uh, peter to send some games from the tournament to me but i'll see what's in the vault and upload some more games as we wait for the package i'll catch you in the next one